I would uh, like to uh, introduce my team. Uh, let me start by introducing myself, and I'm Peter Nyanda, um, Head of Exploration with Tanzania Accelerator Lab. Uh, Gati, please proceed with introducing Hello, yourself. everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, Gati Horombe, Head of Solutions Mapping from uh, UNDP Tanzania Accelerator Lab. Thank you. Thank you, Gati. Idi? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Idi Chazua. Uh, I'm a GIS expert uh, from Open Map Reborn Tanzania, a uh, partner organization uh, on this task. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's the team. Uh, so, again, uh, good evening, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are, and welcome to the Tanzania Coffee House. And today we are sharing with you uh, experiences in um, understanding and working with complex systems. Uh, and of course, we are uh, going to show you how the Accelerator Lab in Tanzania, and of course, this partner, its partners, uh, Open Map Development, as Mr. Idi has introduced uh, himself here. Uh, and we will show how we used uh, collective intelligence to map informal urban infrastructures in the process of improving waste management. Uh, and in doing so, uh, we used crowd mapping uh, in mobile survey methods. And again, in the spirit of collective intelligence, we engaged uh, student volunteers, uh, local residents, uh, of course, government authorities, and especially in uh, uh, the uh, water uh, authority, uh, and also non-government organizations that uh, uh, we're, we're also part uh, of, the, of this project. And of course, we were able to uh, uh, use uh, citizen-generated uh, data. I think as you saw from Cathy's presentation uh, initially, uh, one of the methods of collective intelligence is uh, uh, citizen-generated data. And we did use that, and, but also we combined it with satellite data to sort of try to understand uh, the realities of uh, waste management and some of its implications in this part of the world. Um, and of course, we also looked at its complexities because again, solid waste or waste management in general is quite a, uh, a complex subject. And, and of course, just to mention that this work was designed uh, to respond to the Sustainable Development Goal 11, uh, which of course focuses on uh, making cities inclusive, uh, safe, resilient, uh, and also sustainable. Uh, and we are actually um, bringing you this story from a tiny, tiny place uh, called Buongo, which is a ward in Yamagana district in Mwanza City. Uh, and this place is actually uh, located on the shores, uh, if you're familiar with this part of the world, on the shores of Lake Victoria, uh, which is in up north Tanzania, uh, in the United Republic of Tanzania, in the, uh, in the east of Africa. Uh, so the dot you are seeing there on the African map, uh, that's, that's uh, on the African side of the map, that's, that's actually where we are, we are located. Um, so uh, to tell our story, please meet uh, Fatima. Uh, Fatima is uh, 54 years old, a single mother who, with four dependent children. And Fatima is among over 200 uh, women small business owners at the largest uh, vegetable market uh, in the city of Mwanza. Uh, Fatima wakes up in the morning uh, at 5 a.m. to go to work, and she would work and close her business at up until 7 p.m. in the evening. Now, the place where Fatima works or where she lives uh, is, 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 is quite a new uh, ward. Uh, it is also unplanned. Uh, you can also say that it is semi-urban and it houses the city's uh, largest uh, and only uh, landfill. Now, despite uh, her thriving business, uh, Fatima's health is quite in danger because her workplace is surrounded by piles of organic. Um, uh, this would include uh, waste from uh, remains of vegetables, etc., uh, but also organic waste uh, 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 I mean, inorganic waste such as uh, plastic and uh, metals, etc. Uh, so all of these, uh, uh, you find that all of this garbage is tossed around the workplace, but uh, 
on main passages uh, in, 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 in bins, which, is very, uh, which are very overfilled, but also in blocked waterways and other illegal uh, dumping places. So just to put you into context, uh, Mwanza is Tanzania's second uh, largest and, uh, city. And it's one, according to the World Bank, uh, Mwanza is one of the fastest developing urban centers in sub-Saharan Africa. The city produces over 300 tons of garbage every day, uh, out of which 70% is estimated to be uh, organic waste. Uh, the city, uh, the municipal waste management is, supposed, uh, is supported by uh, four uh, private companies who act as aggregators, uh, but also uh, it is also supported by other five community-based waste collection services. Um, however, uh, this city faces numerous uh, systemic challenges that threaten to overwhelm the current waste management system, and that includes lack of investment, lack of uh, um, recycling facilities and growth of informal settlements with unmapped waste management uh, infrastructures. Uh, I'll pass this over to my colleague Gatti, who will talk about uh, more about the approach on how we try to address these problems. Over to you, Gatti. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. So, um, in response to these many challenges around um, solid waste management, um, Tanzania Accelerator Lab thought it's better to first support the city council, um, generate enough data set information, which could bring um, extensive understanding of the existing waste management infrastructure. In partnership with Open Map um, Development Tanzania and 10 um, volunteers from local universities, we use satellite data and crowd mapping to create an overview of solid waste um, production and collection in Buhongo Ward. So using humanitarian uh, open street map uh, platform, um, in the span of only two weeks, students were able to remotely um, label buildings, roads, uh, waterways in the, in the ward, as well as identifying possible uh, trash sites. Um, the resulting uh, data sets were, um, was verified um, um, with Open Map um, Development Tanzania technical team. Um, we also engaged um, community members in the process of data collection. I mean, men, women, including Fatima and local government officials who actually use their own uh, mobile phone to improve um, data by mapping extra features like uh, the location of waste dump sites, um, uh, types of waste um, uh, generated and waste storage facilities within the, the ward. So this data was combined uh, into the infrastructure map produced by volunteers. So to students um, who participated in the, in the process, this was their first time experience to use people, data, technology, I mean, collective intelligence approach uh, to address development challenges. And uh, to government officials, actually, it was an efficient way to quickly understand what works and, that, and what doesn't work um, within the existing solid waste management system. So I'll pass over to my colleague, Edie, who will share with us the results of the mapping. Edie, please welcome. Okay, uh, thank you, Gad. So just give the highlight of the activities we did. Uh, initially, we learned a visual mapperson, visual mapperson whereby uh, different uh, uh, students were able to map uh, from where they are, so it was uh, remote mapping. And out of that, we managed to map over 26,000 features, which that included uh, roads, waterway, buildings, uh, and trash sites. So as you're seeing from the maps, uh, we have uh, that blank map that is the times uh, before we did mapping. And after mapping, you can see that you have a lot of points in the, in the maps. And also from the statistics, you can see from uh, late 2018, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the buildings, the maps are starting to be added from the, from in the maps. And uh, this mapping uh, helped to identify the, the buildings which initially was not in the uh, maps. 
and that uh, used by the government in different in different activity. So uh, to accomplish this mapping, uh, we use that satellite image, and also we use community mapping, whereby we engage with a local community from uh, identified one, which is Buhongwa, and with them we manage uh, to collect uh, different kind of uh, information uh, from from the from the community. And as you see uh, from the slide, uh, we have combination of uh, buildings uh, which was uh, mapped from a uh, satellite image. And also we have additional uh, data point, which is green and lead points. Uh, so those are data which was collected uh, directly uh, by a community in the field. And in, in data collection, uh, we managed to collect different kind of attribute information, which later on analysis, uh, we managed to identify different kind of issues uh, which was uh, visualized. And for example, from this specific map, you can see we have uh, the building uh, background and also we have a uh, lead dot, which uh, these are the people who uh, surveyed and they say that they're having waste storage at their home place. And also you can see the green uh, dot, uh, they say that they have uh, storage facilities and the lead one, they don't have storage facilities. So uh, in combination with this information, like this from these maps and other uh, data, we can find that you can highlight that uh, in some of the areas, people, they, they need service, but there is no waste collection services. And uh, to go, uh, to use that example, uh, we manage uh, to make over 20 type uh, uh, different maps uh, with different theme uh, in visualization, and they were showing different kind of, they were highlighting different uh, problems in the community. And those information was uh, directly used by uh, government uh, officials, and they gi it gives them a picture of, uh, okay, what is the situation, like the existing situation uh, in that world. Uh, also, uh, addition to that, in the data collection, uh, we incorporate community member, and for example, Fatma uh, participated uh, in data collection and data validation, which give her a good sense of data, and, uh, trying to see how the data is useful to highlight the uh, problems uh, which is facing. So that's the uh, general about this. I, I can pass to my colleague, Peter. From Peter. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you very much, Edie. Uh, just to wrap up now, as Kathy said in our presentation, uh, collective intelligence is uh, shared or group intelligence uh, that emerges from collaboration, collective efforts, and competition of many individuals, and it appears in consensus decision-making. Uh, the feedback we got from the community members and then the kinds of data we were able to create was of great value, not just to the community, but also to the city planning department as well. Now, by using this information, therefore, uh, the city will be able to determine, first of all, the number of waste collectors they needed, uh, new rules and regulations, uh, uh, waste management communication strategies, uh, and also the city also uh, is working towards expanding these services to other wards, including small island, islands that are located in the city. And lastly, the city is uh, uh, devising mechanisms to support uh, recycling businesses uh, in the in the in the area. Um, in the end, uh, we do hope that uh, by using this data, this kind of information that we created through this project, and of course by using collective intelligence, which has uh, pro uh, produced uh, this novel data, we do hope that Fatima and our fellow 200 uh, women that work at this area will enjoy the services that will be expanded to their uh, to their area. But also, again, they will enjoy to work in such a healthy and uh, safe uh, environment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end uh, of our presentation. Uh, pass this back to, uh, to Mirko uh, for the uh, next steps Q&A. Uh, over to you, Mirko. Actually, it's over to Kathy. <laughs> Um, so thanks, Peter. I think you know this Over is a really—it's <laughs> okay. This is a really nice example of 
how you involved a really wide and diverse range of stakeholders in thinking about this problem in generating new types of data that didn't exist before so that actually all of those different stakeholders could understand a complex system from uh, a different perspective. Um, I've seen that there are some questions coming up in, in the chat now, Peter, so perhaps you might start responding to those. Maybe I read the question in the chat from, we have a question from Bissam. Uh, it says, nice presentation team. Sorry if I missed, but did you also train community members like Fatima herself for the data collection and validation process as well? Any challenges in terms of data collection process? Thank you very much. If I can take that. Um, Yes, uh, for community members like Fatima, they were trained uh, to collect data. And uh, one of the methods, as Gati explained earlier, was to use a mobile phone to collect data. And there was a, a survey that was actually uploaded in, a, uh, in an app called ODK in, in their own mobile phone. So Fatima had her own phone. And uh, when this questionnaire was uploaded, we had to train them on how to use the questionnaire, but also on how to submit the data to the central repository or to the central server. And uh, so that's how it went in the community, but also even students, volunteers, were also trained on how to, uh, to run the, uh, the, what we call the mapathon, which is actually mapping the buildings by using a computer uh, program. And, uh, and of course, one of the biggest challenge was uh, in some parts was internet connect connectivity, because by using um, a mobile phone, you need to have, uh, data on but we tried to solve this challenge by ensuring that data was also able to be collected uh, offline uh, but again uh, when you are in a rural setting uh, uh, not everyone is computer savvy uh, you, you have people of different uh, ages so you can obviously uh, see the differences in how to use um, um, something like an app but obviously we tried uh, our level best to ensure that we collect the data that we wanted um, Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. We have a question from uh, Seta. What was the role of the local municipality and the statistical agency in the data collection and data val validation exercise? I think, Edie, you can take that. What was the role of the local municipality and the statistical agency in the data collection and data validation exercise? Uh, okay, uh, thanks, Gat. So, for uh, specific for the task, uh, okay, by starting, uh, because uh, local municip municipality at the end of the uh, 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 at the end of the task, they supposed to own uh, the methodology and everything. So, and also the data, they will be the one who will use the data uh, to to do analysis and to see where they can support. So the yellow uh, start from uh, initial data collection to make sure that uh, all uh, the regularity in data collection in terms of permissions are uh, there. And also in terms of uh, reaching all the people uh, uh, who will be needed uh, to collect the information. So that means uh, local government officers and other, uh, law and other officers at the ward level. Yeah, I can say that in short. Maybe you can add up on that. Yes, actually the um, government officials from the municipality themselves also participated in the um, data collection uh, using the mobile phone. So for them also was an opportunity to learn how to use the technology, the new technology in, in, in data collection. And it was interesting because um, finally they appreciate the methodology and they said, well, we, we normally use like three months to collect data, but um, you have managed to use, I mean, using this new approach, new technology, a collective intelligence, we, you, we have just used, you have just used uh, two weeks to get all these uh, data sets, useful data sets. So they really appreciate and for them was an opportunity to learn on how to use this new um, um, data collection approach. 
Yeah, we also have, sorry, I have to move fast as we have many questions. We have a question from Hadija Nabale. How did the team ensure diversity of the data collected? Were there some unusual contributors of data? If yes, kindly share them. Peter, I'm not sure if you can um, address yeah, this. Yeah, let me take that. I think um, speaking of unusual uh, sources of data, first of all, in our setting, when you use um, uh, satellite data, uh, that is quite new. And I, th I think uh, also uh, trying to piggyback to that question on uh, the, the role of the Bureau of Statistics is that in our setting, the Bureau of Statistics has not started using data such as satellite data. So this kind of a use case is quite important because then we, are, we have a case to build with the National Bureau of Statistics that this data can work. But also very quickly, I wanted to answer the question of, on incentive. Uh, the Earth Lab is within the United Nations Development Program uh, office in Tanzania. And for many students, for example, this was quite an incentive to be able to work with the UN agency and sort of builds up in their resume. So we didn't have to pay uh, uh, them to do this job, but they were quite happy to be involved uh, during uh, that time, to be involved in the project. And it's quite useful for their uh, career, career progression. Um, so yeah, back to you, Gatti. I thought I answered, I answered that question as well. That was in the chat on incentives. Um, uh, if there Excellent. Comments. Thank you so much. I hope um, it is clear. I don't see um, more questions. 